Good afternoon and thank you for joining me for my presentation on employment law. The area of law I've decided to cover is the Whistleblowers Act. This presentation PowerPoint will be presented by Christopher L. Worth. The Whistleblowers Protection Act. Basically what the Whistleblower Protection Act does is it is protects any disclosure of information by federal, public, or private employees that they reasonably believe evidence or activities are going on that constitute a violation of the law, rules, or regulations. Uh, you have mismanagement, waste of funds, abuse of authority, any type of substantial and specific danger to the public constitutes whistleblowing. Why should we care about whistleblowing? Pretty simple, whistleblowing enables justice, it enables transparency in the company or organization you're involved in. It could encourage a culture of openness and accountability and it also can encourage others that may have been frightened to speak up to do so. It empowers workers, it creates an organization that rejects wrongdoing. Overall, it makes the environment in which workers can feel safe and protected from issues that could harm them. Businesses that are covered are public, private, or government agencies, and all industries can be impacted by whistleblowing activities. Some of the major laws for the Whistleblower Protection Act were instituted in 1989 in Executive Order 12731, which stated that all federal employees and private citizens, oh, excuse me, private employees should disclose waste, fraud, abuse, and corruption to authorities. This executive order makes such disclosures mandatory to ensure standards of ethical conduct in all executive branch employees. In 2012, the Whistleblower Protection Enhancement Act was passed to strengthen protections for federal employees as long as the private sector. Uh, expanded the qualifications for protected disclosures while additionally expanding the position imposed for violating whistleblower protections. On the right is a graph from 2022 uh, about how much percentage it shows of the whistleblower acts that were reported. Looks like the public sector did very well, most of the reporting, and the private sector about half and half, very little in the uh, other sector. The WPA Act applies to employers, employees, and managers alike. It empowers the employees to have the confidence to speak up against wrong unions and management, and also empowers the managers and employers to speak up against wrong unions and management. Whistleblowers Act has a lot of impacts on the employment law as a whole. The impacts of filing a whistleblower suit, a whistleblower suit is not really for the lighthearted. Uh, you must have strong mental capacity, physical bearings to proceed with it because it can be quite draining mentally and physically as you will be placed up against those who may appear to have more power or more authority than you. WPA uh, whistleblowing can be viewed as mistrusting towards some employers. However, if you're not doing anything that constitutes breaking the law or danger to the public, you should have nothing to fear. It doesn't put employees in compromising positions as illustrated to the right. You can see the gentleman with the longer black hair. His eyes are closed because he is a whistleblower and everywhere he goes around his company, he feels that all eyes are always looking down on him. The guy to the left is just your typical yes man, company man that will say and do anything or look the other way for the company. And that's what I was illustrating here. One major case for whistleblowing was a man by the name of Ben Artsy. He blew the whistle on the Kilgore Williams Group Incorporated. Eric Ben Artsy, he was a former Dutch bank risk officer. He's one of the three whistleblowers who reported the improper accounting at the German bank to the regulators in 2010-2011. Uh, he raised the alarm overhauling its derivatives portfolio in order to hide billions of potential tra uh, trading losses. The U.S. Security and Exchange Commission imposed $55 million fine against the bank over the issue. 
Benarty was due to a share of 15% of that sum, adding up to about eight and a quarter million, yet he did reject the payout. Other important cases involving whistleblowing acts was Karen Silkwood, a 1974 nuclear power plant whistleblower. She was actually one of the first well-known whistleblowers. She reported the power plant for unsafe work conditions, testified in front of the United States of America Energy Commission. She won a $1.38 million out-of-court settlement to avoid admitting its responsibilities. That's what the company settled for. It also brings me to John Michael Gravitt. He was a 1983 employee at General Electric. The company supervisors were defrauding the government. Uh, GE fired Mr. Gravitt in retaliation of that act. Despite the... Uh, they, they, lead, they led him to file the... Uh, claim under the False Claims Act, despite that law had been pretty weakened by World War II. He ultimately testified in front of Congress about the state of the FCA, which was too weak to adequately uh, protect whistleblowers. The testimony influenced the 1986 amendments to the act, which renewed and strengthened the statute by prohibiting companies from retaliating against employees who did report fraud. And that brings me to our closing slide here, the current issues with employment law uh, as far as the Whistleblowing Act is concerned. Workers that still engage in whistleblowing activities face a lot of mental stressors that could lead them to physical harm. It is very, very straining to be a whistleblower. You are uh, honestly looked at like the odd man out or a tattletale, no loyalty, uh, things of that nature. Uh, there were two laws containing whistleblower protections, the AMLA, which is Anti-Money Laundering Act, and the Criminal Antitrust Anti-Retaliation Act, both passed in 2020. The CAR Act extends whistleblowing protections to people who report criminal violations of the antitrust law. The AMLA may have foreshadowed a more aggressive approach to recruiting whistleblowers. Uh, many statutes actually provide financial incentives for whistleblowers to come forward by offering a percentage of the funds recovered in enforcement actions as a bounty to report uh, violations of the law, regulations, and unsafe practices. In closing, the uh, current policy prescriptions are seeking to develop better whistleblowing policies and nurture open reporting cultures uh, to try and reinforce them on more secure evidential base. In reviewing, I've drawn on rich, I've drawn from a rich stream of academic research and documentary and legal analysis, uh, hoping you in the aim of sharpening the thinking around the nature of whistleblowing and the concept and bad PR that it does receive. In my view, there's still much to learn regarding this important but under-resourced area of policy, and to the end, we have highlighted a number of important issues involving whistleblowing acts. Thank you for your time and hope you have a great day. Sources reference for this project.